As we continue our Heisman week, I thought it would be a fun idea to compile a list of some Heisman facts in history that you might not have known. Now, if you're a college football fan, I'm sure you'll already know about some of these facts I'm going to mention today, but for a new college football fan, hopefully this helps expand your knowledge. So here are 26 fun facts about the Heisman Trophy. Before we get to today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I post a lot of college football content here, so if you enjoy videos like this, this is definitely the place for you. Before we get to some Heisman history, here are a few fun facts facts. The numbers 14 and 20 have been the most common numbers from Heisman winners, as each number has been worn by five players each. The first player to wear number 14 and win was Yale running back Clint Frank back in 1937, with the most recent being Oklahoma quarterback Sam Bradford, who won in 2008. The first number 20 to win was LSU running back Billy Cannon, who won in 1959, with the most recent being Oklahoma running back Billy Sims, who won in 1978. All five winners came in a 20-year window. Ohio State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Notre Dame have the most number of Heisman trophies won, each with seven. However, Oklahoma and Notre Dame are the only schools that have seven different players that have won the Heisman, as Archie Griffin won two with Ohio State. While at an airport in 1995, Heisman winner Eddie George's trophy was damaged when he put it through an x-ray machine at the security checkout. Even though Boston College's Doug Flutie was the first quarterback ever to throw for over 10,000 yards while in college, many believe that it was the classic Hill Flutie game against Miami that won him the Heisman back in 1984. But Actually, the votes were already in before that iconic game was played. The oldest and youngest Heisman winners ever both played for the ACC. The oldest was Chris Wenke, who was 28 years old when he won the award in 2000. He spent six years in minor league baseball before he enrolled at Florida State. The youngest winner was back in 2016 when Lamar Jackson at Louisville won at the age of 19 years and 338 days, just four days younger than when Jameis Winston won back in 2013. After Steve Spurrier's Heisman victory in 1967, he gave his trophy to the University of Florida's president at the time, Dr. J. Wayne Wrights, so the entire school could enjoy it. As a result of his generosity, the Heisman began its current practice of issuing two trophies every year. One trophy is presented to the individual winner, while the second is presented to the winner's university. Alright, those were a few fun facts that I was able to find. Now let's get to some more historical facts about the Heisman Trophy. Following the conclusion of the 1935 college football season, members of New York's Downtown Athletic Club appointed a club trophy committee charged with conducting the presentation of the first award in the club's headquarters, located at the southern end of Manhattan. Before the now famous stiff arm design, the club trophy committee at New York's Downtown Athletic Club concurred that the traditional cup or bowl seemed too commonplace, lacking in distinction, and in no way emblematic of the athletic talent that was to be honored and immortalized. It was decided that the trophy would be a bronze embodiment of a muscular footballer driving for yardage. The DAC commissioned Frank Eliscu, a well-known sculptor and National Academy of Design Prize winner. He immediately began to work, selecting Ed Smith, a leading player on the 1934 New York University football team, as his primary model. He prepared a rough clay study that was sanctioned by the DAC committee and sent uptown for approval by the head football coach at Fordham University. The prototype was set up on a field, and Crowley's players were asked to assume various positions to illustrate and verify the sidestep, the forward drive, and a strong right arm thrust. The artist closely observed these action sequences and modified his clay prototype. The first award was initially named the DAC. DAC Trophy was presented on December 9, 1935 to Jay Berwanger, running back from Chicago. In November of 1935, he received a telegram from Manhattan's Downtown Athletic Club informing him that he had won a trophy for being the most valuable player east of the Mississippi, as well as a trip for two to New York. Oh, and another fun fact, back then, they only awarded players who played east of the Mississippi. It was only the DAC Trophy for one season. On October 3, 1936, legendary football coach and DAC Athletic Director John W. Heisman passed away. The name of the award was changed to the Heisman Memorial Trophy in his honor. In 1945, Felix Doc Blanchard won Army's first Heisman after helping lead the Knights to their second straight national title. He became the first junior to ever win the award. The fullback totaled 17 total touchdowns, rushing for 700 yards and 16 touchdowns while averaging 7 yards a carry. Another fun fact about that is the fact that his teammate Glenn Davis finished second, the only time players from the same school have ever finished first and second in the Heisman vote. Paul Horning won the Heisman back in 1956 and is still to this day the only player to ever win while playing for a losing team. Now, it's not like his team went 5 and 7 or anything close like that. Notre Dame finished the year 2 and 8. Horning carried the ball 94 times for 420 yards and completed 59 of 111 passes for 900 yards and 3 touchdowns with only a completion percentage of 53%. On the season, 
season, he totaled 1,337 yards, which ranked second nationally. He counted for more than half of the Irish scoring. He didn't even receive the most first place votes though, as Oklahoma running back Tommy McDonald earned more. Horning is widely regarded as one of the least deserving Heisman winners of all time. Syracuse running back Ernie Davis made history in 1961 by becoming the first African American player to ever win the Heisman Trophy. It was a close race though, as he edged out Ohio State running back Rob Ferguson in the vote 824 to 771. Ernie Davis rushed for 823 yards with 12 rushing touchdowns. In 1962, Oregon State quarterback Terry Baker became the first player from a school west of Texas to ever win the Heisman. He threw for over 1,700 yards with 15 touchdowns and rushed for over 500 yards with 9 touchdowns as the Beavers finished 8-2 and, and 16th in the polls. In addition to winning the Heisman, he also won the Maxwell Award and the W.J. Voigt Memorial Trophy, was a consensus first-team All-American, and was named Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. After winning the the Heisman, Baker led Oregon State to a 6-0 victory over Villanova in the Liberty Bowl. The only score of the afternoon was a 99-yard touchdown run by Terry Baker. He also was on the Oregon State basketball team and is the only Heisman winner to ever appear in a Final Four, as Oregon State made it in 1963. Terry Baker averaged 13.4 points a game for the Beavers. In 1972, Johnny the Jet Rogers became the first wide receiver to ever win the Heisman Trophy. He truly did it all for Nebraska, as he caught 58 passes for over 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns. He did damage on the ground too, as he had 350 rushing yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. After winning the Heisman Trophy, Rodgers put his all-around game on display in a 40-6 win over Notre Dame in the 1973 Orange Bowl. Rodgers had a hand in all five of Nebraska's touchdowns against the Fighting Irish. He rushed for three while adding one touchdown reception, and he even threw a 52-yard pass for another score. In 1975, Ohio State running back Archie Griffin became the first player to ever win his second Heisman Trophy. 45 years later, he's still the only player to win multiple awards, as he did it in back-to-back -back years. As a junior in 1974, Griffin ran away with the voting, winning by over 1,000 points. He rushed for 1,700 yards with 12 touchdowns while averaging 6.5 yards per carry. He led the country in rushing yards and was in the top 10 in touchdowns. Griffin's numbers were down across the board the following year, but yet he still won. Yet again, he won by over 1,000 points. He rushed for 1,450 yards with only 4 rushing touchdowns. His yards per carry went down a whole yard as well. Still, it was enough for him to win his second Heisman Trophy in dominating fashion. In 1977, the Heisman made its television debut. The president of the DAC and the Heisman Committee decided to present the award as part of an hour-long primetime television event. Texas running back Earl Campbell took home the award. If you have about 30 minutes, I highly recommend you go and check out the ceremony on YouTube. It has some really cool vintage college football moments and features a number of historic names. In 1982, for the first time, finalists were invited to New York to take part in a live television televised Heisman ceremony that was broadcast on ABC. The Heisman finalists were Herschel Walker, John Elway, and Eric Dickerson, although John Elway didn't attend. Herschel Walker took on the Heisman after his great season at Georgia. In 1993, Florida State quarterback Charlie Ward won the Heisman Trophy by 1,600 points, which at the time was the second largest margin of victory in Heisman history. The following year, he was selected in the first round of the NBA draft by the New York Knicks and is still the only Heisman winner to ever play in the NBA. There was some Heisman history in 1996 as Danny Werfel became the second player from the University of Florida to ever win the Heisman, joining his head coach, Steve Spurrier. It marked the first time a Heisman winner came from a school coached by another former Heisman winner. This one is a really cool and unique one to me because I really can't see something like this ever happening again. It was close though as Werfel won by less than 200 points. He finished the season with 3,600 passing yards and 39 touchdown passes for Florida. Although he wasn't a complete defensive player, Charles Woodson became the first and currently only player who specialized in defense to ever win the Heisman Trophy back in 1997. On defense, Woodson finished with 43 tackles and 7 interceptions. On offense, he caught 11 passes for 230 31 yards with two touchdowns while also running in a touchdown. In addition, he also had a punt return for a touchdown too. With the Heisman being such an offensive award, this very well can be the only player on defense to win a Heisman in our lifetime. Tim Tebow made history in 2007 as he became the first sophomore to ever win the Heisman Trophy. He finished the season with 3,300 passing yards and 32 passing touchdowns with only six interceptions. He had one of the greatest seasons we'd ever seen from a quarterback on the ground as well as he rushed for 900 yards with 23 rushing touchdowns. In 2012, Johnny Man 
Manziel became the first freshman to ever take home the Heisman. He was a redshirt freshman who took the country by storm as he threw for 3,700 yards with 26 touchdowns while rushing for 1,400 yards and 21 touchdowns. He would remain the only freshman to win the award for long as freshman Jameis Winston won it the following season. However, there has still never been a true freshman to win the Heisman Trophy. In 2017, Baker Mayfield became the first walk-on to ever win the Heisman. He walked on to Texas Tech in 2013 and won the starting job. Then, after things didn't work out at Texas Tech, he transferred to Oklahoma. In 2017, Mayfield was sensational for the Sooners. He threw for 4,600 yards with 43 touchdowns and only 6 interceptions as he led Oklahoma to the college football playoff. 2019 was a record-breaking year that we may never see topped again. Heisman Trophy winner was senior quarterback Joe Burrow of LSU, who broke numerous voting records. In the more than eight decades of the Heisman Trophy, Burrow received the highest percentage of first place votes ever, with 90.7% of the ballots listing him as the winner. In addition, his win was the largest margin of victory ever, beating second place finalist Jalen Hurts by 1,846 points. Joe Burrow finished with 841 first place votes, the second most of all time. Burrow also received the highest percentage ever of possible points, with 93.8%, and the the highest ever percentage of ballots with 95.5%. Well, that wraps up today's video. What was something you learned today about the Heisman that you didn't already know? Is there a cool and fun fact that you know about the Heisman that I didn't mention? Drop a comment down below and share it with everyone in the comments. If you haven't done so yet, if you could please take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It only takes a second to do, and it really helps share this video with more college football fans. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.